last stop of the day is a more famous movie location and it's quite a difficult trek apparently so we're going to try and give it our best shot to get down to it apparently it's really really muddy even at the best of times during the summer yeah. so maybe during the winter it's going to be too muddy but we'll fingers crossed we get down we're going to check it out it's called the devil's pulpit or called it's also called phoenix phoenix glen it's where from the famous uh, tv series called outlander the liar spring i believe it's called an outlander and um, it's basically this hundred foot gorge in the middle of the Scottish Highlands, just east of Loch Lomond. Completely hidden, we'd never heard about it before until last year when we read about it online. Parked up just over the road, over there, and there's a pretty muddy path all along here. There's not a lot of signage, but if you look at the coordinates that you can read about online, specifically in the uh, blog post which will be on our website about this place go and check that out you'll be able to find the exact place of where we parked up and the easiest way to get down to the liar spring itself i'll take the high road and you'll take the low road is that the way down you don't know it's a beautiful place this though even if we can't yeah, find the way down yet but well, let's very look at it's a very, very steep drop. It's so sheer. Close. All the way down there. To look for the ladder. I'm guessing it'll be obvious. Yeah, I think it's a fair walk round. So just keep heading round until you see the ladder. So there's actually a lot of different paths leading around this place. And I guess it's just because the main path gets so overtrodden and then um, people just keep branching off and going in different ways. It's because it's so boggy around here. Yeah. It's quite crazy. We've been reading online that apparently there's been proposals for like a big car park and um, a visitor centre here and like I'm guessing a proper pathway and everything down to the Devil's Pulpit because it's just become such a huge tourist attraction since the Outlander series that it simply can't cope anymore. So if that goes ahead by 2021 it should be a lot more accessible. As you can see it's a pretty muddy path and we did read that it is very, very muddy. And that is a long way down. Woo! So we're looking for a, what's it called? The, uh, Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder. Which isn't a ladder, as I was expecting. I read about it online. It said Jacob's Ladder. I thought that meant it was going to be a hundred foot ladder, which was quite old. Made from like wood falling apart and all that. It's not that bad. Apparently it's like this stone steps, which is still kind of falling apart, but it's not as bad as you think. Where? Yeah. I know, I know, it's obviously just for the view. <laughs> yeah, well, let's not go that way. And so this is a part you read about online where it's like a tiny thin slippery path and then a hundred foot drop on your left, about 30 meters down to the bottom of the gorge. The first sighting of the ladders, we're going down through this little gully bit here. I'm guessing the entrance is upside Gemma, up here. It has a long way down to the bottom. Yeah, so just as we thought, if you keep following the path round, you will eventually come to a field. So in fact, there's a path here. You should probably just walk down the path side of the field. You can't see the river and there's not as many nice views. If you follow that down, just behind me here is the start of the stairs. And you can't miss it really. There's like big stone steps. And that leads you down about 100 feet down into the gorge floor. So let's go, wish me luck. Can't believe how steep this is. This is so hard. They've even got rope to help you down. That's crazy. Take your time. So I'm stressed about getting that yellow jacket dirty. <laughs> I can't just climb back up to hang it up. Don't take a brand new jacket on this hike. Well, you know, I did suggest that and you're like, no, it looks really good. Even though I am wearing the identical color of jumper. Anyway, still a long way down. Definitely should have prepped and wore my hiking boots. Need to abseil down here. <sighs> How the hell did you do that? Oh my god. Jesus. Alright, really careful on this bit. I would hold on to the rope. I'm not holding on to it. Too far down. Maybe easier to go backwards. Just don't trip over the rope now. Yeah. <laughs> I 
Make sure you get down now. Oh, easy peasy. You can get a wee railing. That's good. Gemma is braving it and I'm um, going barefoot, which apparently is the only way of accessing the rest of the springs. I don't know, man. The water is about eight degrees, but if she's doing it, and I'm going to need to do it. So I'm going to have to go and get soggy feet again for the second time today. I'm going to have wet feet. Oh, the things we do for content. Oh, I really do not want to get wet feet again. But here goes. Well, the good bit about this is my feet are so numb now that I can't even feel the rocks digging into them. So that's good. Number one tip for coming to the Devil's Pulpit, bring a towel, bring wellies, or bring a warm pair of socks for afterwards. Because all of that footage you just saw was shot in the middle of Scottish winters, 2nd of December. It's 8 degrees today, kind of warm to be honest. I know I can't feel my feet. Whew. So that is definitely my number one recommendation if you're coming here. Is dress appropriately. Wow, I've never felt cold like that before my feet are going to fall off. But anyway, so you go down into the Devil's Pulpit, and you're immediately transported to this other world. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's as if like there's a river of blood running through this ravine and uh, it's all echoing around you. You don't even re realise that you're still in Scotland. You feel like you're in the middle of this fairy tale land. It's a truly incredible place. Highly recommend it. Cornstarch, dog poo bags, recycled aluminium foil, yeah, like degradable refuse sacks. Even like the wipes there. Yeah, they're all biodegradable. Yeah. That's really good. Mm. What? Vegan patty? Two pounds. Oh my god. The sausages are two pounds seventy for six sausages. Six veggie sausages. How good is that? I think I'm shopping in the morning. Maybe I'm just coming from Australia and I'm expecting to be double the price on that but I thought it was so cheap for vegan holiday sauce. Oh, these organic wines and everything. What's that? Veggie hazelnut chocolate spread. You've been looking for that forever. This place is amazing if you're wanting organic and kind of vegetarian vegan food. Pizza. That? Hold on, hold on. What's that? Pizza. Traditional pizza. That's me. Sign me up. We've just had a delicious dinner. We're tucked up in the van. However, this campsite has fire pits, which we're going to be going and making the most of. Um, because basically it's like a kind of zero light pollution zone. There's no lights in the area. And apparently it's really, really good for stars. So fingers crossed we've got a good starry night. And um, yeah, we're just going to go and enjoy the fire. One of our last nights on Heart 200. So we just need to relax and enjoy ourselves. Good morning guys, it's a rather cold and wet morning here in Comrie. We've just uh, been sitting working away on our laptops, watching the sunrise over the valley. The clouds are sitting really low, but it's giving it this quite um, beautiful look around the forest and it's so nice, I tell you, waking up in amongst the nature again, with the browns and the different deep warm colours. It's a really cute place this and it's so nice to watch uh, slowly come to life as the sun you know, brightens everything up. So the place we're staying at is Comrie Croft um, Hostel which also has a campsite and a camper van spot and everything as well. There's warm showers, uh, there's a kitchen section and everything and um, completely really clean well kept toilets. We made the most of all of that this morning before we head on to our next stop. So we're heading south on our way back down to Stirling now. Um, <clears throat> the rain's come on and a classic Scottish drizzle. The drive down from Creef down to Stirling 
luckily for us is really really photogenic filled with like different historical buildings and bridges so uh, we're just going to drive along see as much of that as we can and then hopefully go and find somewhere indoors in Stirling we can go and hang out now we've finally arrived in Stirling which is our last stop of um, the Heart 200 road trip however depending on the route you take this might be your first stop and I highly recommend that it is because the history in this part of Scotland is simply incredible you've got castles you've got monuments to William, William Wallace my man and um, you've just got loads of other buildings and bridges and everything that you definitely need to check out. Our first stop in Stirling is uh, we're up at the Beheading Stone which is this hill just on the other side of the uh, Stirling Castle where you get this incredible view over the entire city of Stirling. Now the Beheading Stone sits at the top of Moat Hill which is just on the other side of Stirling Castle. Now the actual area around here has a fascinating history it goes all the way back to the first century 100 AD where there was an old iron age fort that was um, destroyed here. Yeah, that fort was found to be destroyed in the first century. Fascinating how long ago that is yeah. now. So we've come up to the viewpoint at the Church of Holyrood and we've got Stirling Castle to one side. Beautiful view. It's a lovely little peaceful spot actually. It's really quiet up here. We can see a rain cloud coming though so we're not going to stay around too long. But yeah there's so much history around this part of Scotland. It actually really reminds me of Edinburgh here as well. It's a really nice place to come. So unfortunately that's our Heart 200 road trip now come to an end. We are heading back to Edinburgh to drop off our bunk camper camper van. If you want to see more parts of Scotland guys let us know where in the comments down below and as always we will see you next time.